everybody is sorry I am late. Thank you very much. Take your seats. Take... Oh, it's, it's, it's an online class. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. You, you probably already sat down. Uh, let's just get on with it, shall we? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Louth Playgoers YouTube channel. My name is Professor Marshall, and today I am going to be teaching you Theatre 101, The History of Musicals. Yes, that's right. Due to Shrek being a huge success and the upcoming concert show, Thoroughly Modern Musicals, I thought I'd dive right in to the history of the musical. So uh, strap yourselves in, get your notepads out. There will not be a quiz at the end. I've got all this information from Wikipedia. Let's get into the lesson. So before we can look into the history of the subject, we must first understand what is our subject. So what is musical theatre? Musical theatre is a form of performance which includes spoken dialogue, acting, dance and song. Now musical theatre may overlap into other theatre performances such as opera or ballet. However, the difference with musical theatre is that musical theatre gives an equal importance to each element. An equal importance to song, to dance, to dialogue. And musical theatre, pretty much since the 20th century, has been shortened to shows that we call musicals. So let's look at the early origins and with pretty much all theatre we're going back to the ancients, to the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans, about 2,500 years to be precise. Now the ancient Greeks staged comedies and tragedies which included music and dance in these massive open air amphitheatres and uh, Roman comedies later on did the same kind of thing. However, why were these not musicals? Well, the music was more of an accompaniment and the dance were separate elements. They didn't all come together at the same point within one coherent piece to make a full show. They were all separate pieces. So, just like with pantomime, the ancients really had little to no influence on our modern subject. So moving on. Now although there were many musical stage performances in the 1700s, none of them were actually called musicals. The first lasting English piece of work from this time was John Gay's The Beggar's Opera from 1728 which took music that was popular at the time and had satirical lyrics set to that tune that took respectable citizens and made them nothing more than common beggars and thieves. This and other British ballad operas, balletas and pantomimes formed the majority of content that could be found on the stage in America all the way up to the 1800s which is where we shall visit next. The musical as we know it today has roots in the French and Viennese operettas of the 1800s. The satiric works of Jacques Offenbach from Paris and the romantic comedies of Johann Strauss II from Vienna were the first musicals to achieve international popularity. Continental operettas were well received in England, but audiences there preferred the style and the offerings of the music hall, which I briefly discussed in our pantomime lesson. While the contemporary Broadway musical took its form from the operettas, it found its comic soul in the entertainment that was offered in America from the mid-1800s onwards. Crude American variety and minstrel shows eventually gave way to the more refined pleasures of vaudeville and the rowdy spirit of burlesque, which leads us 
to a very important show in the history of musicals. The Black Crook. The Black Crook is a piece of musical theatre first produced with great success in New York in 1866. Now what's important to note here is that many theatre writers have noted The Black Crook as the first ever production that conforms to the notions of a musical, making it, potentially, the first ever musical. The story is a Faustian melodramatic romantic comedy. However, the success of the show really is down to its special effects and skimpy costumes. I've got some stats now for you. Uh, it opened on September 12th, 1866 at the 3,200 seat Niblo's Garden on Broadway in New York City. It ran for a record-breaking 474 performances. It then toured extensively for decades and then revived on Broadway in 1870 to 71, 1871 to 72 and many more times after that. Now, The Black Crook is considered a prototype of the modern musical in that its popular songs and dances are interspersed with the play and the songs are actually performed by the actors, not separate performers. However, it is argued strongly by many writers that this is not the first musical. With Kurt Gansey writing, there are pages and pages of earlier shows with scores of original music rather than the patchwork of old and new. The libretto was a hot potch. The Black Crook was simply a thrown-together imitation of the French opera Bouffe Fury, lots of nubile teens in short skirts, a bit of melodrama, and above all, the lashings of moving scenery. Anything less unified, it would be hard to find. The success of The Black Crook opened the way for the development of American musicals in the 1860s. It allowed extravaganzas, pantomimes, the musical farces of Harrigan and Hart, the comic operettas of Gilbert and Sullivan, very well-known name in the musical theatre industry, and uh, their operettas were witty, tuneful, and exquisitely produced, it says here. And that led to a very new high standard of theatrical production, which leads us into the 1900s. During the early 1900s, imports like Franz Lehar's The Merry's Widow in 1907 had immense, enormous influence on the Broadway musical, but American composers like George M. Cohan and Victor Herbert gave the American musical comedy a distinct sound and style. Then, in the 1910s, Jerome Kern, Guy Bolton and P.G. Woodhouse took this a step further with what were known as the Princess Theatre Shows. Now, what these shows did was they put believable people and situations on the stage. So rather than these really extravagant, crazy scenarios that probably came from the pantomimes and Commedia dell'arte, these were now realistic stories with proper people and believable scenarios. And then in the 1920s, the American musical comedy gained worldwide influence. Broadway saw the composing debuts of Cole Porter, Rogers and Hart, The Gershwins, and many others. Uh, Britain put up people like Noel Coward, and then also Kern and Hammerstein II wrote what would arguably become the first taste of the modern musical, Showboat. Showboat is a musical with music by Jerome Kern and book and lyrics by Oscar Hammerstein II. It is based on Edna Ferber's best-selling 1926 novel of the same name. Now, the musical follows the lives of the performers, stagehands and dock workers on the Cotton Blossom, a Mississippi River showboat, over 40 years from 1887 to 1927. And it includes themes of racial prejudice, and a tragic, enduring love. 
The musical contributed such classic songs as Old Man River, Make Believe, and Can't Help Loving That Man. Now, the musical was first produced in 1927 by Florenz Ziegfeld. Now, the premiere of Showboat on Broadway was an important event in the history of American musical theatre. It was a radical departure in musical storytelling, marrying spectacle with seriousness. Compared to the trivial and unrealistic operettas, light musical comedies and follies type musical reviews that defined Broadway in the 1890s and early 20th century. Now, according to the complete book of light opera, this is what they had to say. Here we come to a completely new genre. The musical play as distinguished from musical comedy. Now, the play was the thing, and everything else was subservient to that play. Now came the complete integration of song, humour and production numbers into a single, inextricable, artistic entity. So what we said earlier about the definition of a musical from ballads and operas and dance was that it gave equal weight to each component. So the singing, the dancing and the acting were all as important as the other. And Showboat is arguably the first show in history to do that. And then from Showboat onwards, it went from one strength to another to another. Even the Great Depression and another war could not stop the success of Broadway and musicals with Anything Goes, Oklahoma, Annie Get Your Gun and Kiss Me Kate all being released within 20 years of Showboat. By the time we hit the 1950s, Broadway and its music were some of the most popular music in the entire Western world. More hits such as The King and I, My Fair Lady, Gypsy came about. Then in the 1970s, we saw a slight change of musicals based more on ideas and concepts rather than traditional plot. And that change was created by none other than Stephen Sondheim. British mega musicals then became the thing in the 1980s with Cats, Les Mis and Phantom. In the, uh, in the 90s, there was a bit of a change in how theatre was run with musicals needing mega corporation backing which led to things like Ragtime and The Lion King becoming huge musicals. Then in the 2000s, the resurgence of that American musical comedy which started the whole thing then took into resurgence with The Producers, Hairspray, You're In Town. And then since the 2010s, going into the 2020s and moving on forwards, We've got such creativity and diversity that people really are pushing the boundaries of what is possible within the genre of musical. Such as telling the story of the founding fathers through hip hop. Like doing a perverted, religious, blasphemous show that is actually quite funny and moving. Or like telling a coming of age story set in 19th century Germany with a punk rock soundtrack. Literally anything is possible. And that's it. From ancient Greece all the way to today, that has been the history of musical theatre. That's goodbye from me. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I tried to go all out for you guys with a little set and everything. Um, I really struggled to remember this week's episode, so if you see me looking down a lot, it's just because there was a lot of information and uh, I didn't really have anyone prompting me this time. Um, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I mentioned Thoroughly Modern Musicals, it is coming up soon, so don't forget to get your tickets for that. Um, but yeah, uh, stay safe, stay amazing, and until next time, see ya.